What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about dimensioning in Revit and uh, a little bit of tips and tricks and hacks that they have learned along the way that can make your life a little bit easier when it comes to dimensioning things in Revit. And also how to make things look a bit nicer, I think that's really important as well. Uh, now one of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you is how to you know, change dimensions and change what they show or actually how to fake dimensions but shh, don't tell anybody and a lot of uh, little cool tips and tricks as well. Okay, so that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. Now, before we get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this video. It helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful tutorials each week and then also I make some uh, courses. So if you're either just a beginner and you would like to be able to complete projects on your own and produce all of the project documentation, I have a whole beginner to intermediate level course uh, in Revit. It's available on my website, balkanarctic.com. The link is going to be in the description. Also, uh, if you're interested in some more uh, intermediate or advanced courses, I have a lot of courses on those topics as well. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm actually going to get started with probably the thing that most of you are interested in, and that's how can you fake or change the dimension or, or the uh, dimension number without changing the actual uh, length of that element. So this was really popular and this was uh, available in AutoCAD so you, c you could just double click on the dimension text and you can change it or edit it and you can make it into whatever you want and uh, a lot of people use this to fake or still use this to fake dimensions. I know I did and please don't tell any of my previous uh, bosses uh, but anyways so uh, you did have that ability in AutoCAD and in Revit uh, we don't really have that option so uh, let me show you if you select any of the dimensions you can click on the text and then here it says the, the actual dimension but you do have the option to replace with text but if you decide to type in 840 or let's change it to maybe 860 so that's what's expected of you, but you get here 840 and you don't want to figure it out, you just want to fake it. Well, you would just type this in and hit apply and then you would get this invalid dimension value. So it basically tells you that you can't really use uh, the, a just a number, so you can't really fake just this. So what people tend to do is maybe add a dot and then hit apply and then that wouldn't work. So just do dot zero zero, hit apply, and that wouldn't work. So people would try to fake it somehow and do something like this, but as you can see it looks terrible. But I actually found out a really cool way that you can kind of bypass this uh, option and that's using one website. So let me cancel out of this and minimize Revit for a second and there's this empty character uh, web.com and it looks fairly shady and there are some weird ads etc uh, and uh, it's basically a website that uh, promotes empty characters so here as you can see in the messages you have the option to well type in an empty character so a character that doesn't really appear in text so you can use it if you want to I don't know send empty messages to somebody for some reason uh, but we can actually use that uh, for in our advantage so here at the bottom we have the option to copy that empty character to clipboard so I'm just going to click that and as you can see it says copy to clipboard and now if I go back into Revit uh, click here on text I can just reduce this to 860 and I'm just going to go with control V to paste in that empty character so just type in control V hit apply okay and now it says 860 so you can just use that empty character website just google it I, I don't know how legitimate it is but it does do the trick here in Revit so I, I think it's a cool a uh, cool option and that's the first thing that they wanted to talk about now the second thing is if you're going to do just one change when it comes to dimension styles, please do this change. So I, I'm really annoyed with the fact that these dimension lines go all the way to the uh, to the actual object and here it looks silly uh, where if they mention the center lines and then it goes through this number and it looks really bad so I, I really hate this. So if you're just going to do one change to the dimension, uh, I suggest you just 
go here into edit type and just make sure to change this uh, witness line control from gap to element to just fix the dimension line and hit apply and now it's going to look like this i think it's way more elegant i think it looks much cooler and i i, I prefer using uh, this uh, this method Okay, the next one is going to be considering any openings. So for your openings, you have the ability to show the sill height uh, of uh, that uh, particular opening. So for example, if you go here, select the dimension, go into edit type, one of the options should be, let's see, uh, should be the show uh, sill height So uh, or opening sill height. So let me just find that. Show, uh, so as you can see here, we have the option to show opening height. So that's one of the options. So if you check that and then hit apply, as you can see, the opening height will appear over here below, uh, below your dimension. So you have that option and you can also move it and maybe place it somewhere near the actual opening, just like that. But uh, what I suggest you do is just uncheck the leader here because it looks way more elegant uh, like this. So you can maybe even place it above it if you want. So this now indicates the, uh, the opening height and I think it's a, a very uh, cool additional uh, option to have. Okay, another thing that I would like to show you is the center line mark. So center lines are can be kind of confusing, uh, especially if you have a dimension that's like this. It's kind of further away from the actual opening, and this is just marking out the center line uh, of this door and this of this window. So uh, Revit can make it a bit easier uh, for you to kind of figure out what is this dimension dimensioning uh, by going here into Edit Type, and then we have the center line symbol option and we can actually change it to the M center line. And if I just hit apply, it's going to add that kind of just small symbol here, just uh, referring to that uh, particular uh, center line, just to, just to show you what this dimension is actually dimensioning. Uh, another cool thing uh, that I see people miss uh, in a lot of cases, and that's the uh, option to snap to a certain distance. So for example, for these dimensions, as you can see, they're at equal distances. But if I decide to move them, and then if I snap them back, as you can see here, when I come to this position, we get that little blue line off to the side, off to the right, and uh, this dimension kind of snaps to that point. So why does this happen? Uh, so we have a setting that allows us to control the distance between two dimension lines. So if I go here into edit type, uh, we have the dimension line snap distance, which is currently set to 10 millimeters. Now if I change that to maybe seven and then hit apply, click OK. Now if I select one of these lines and if I move it closer, now that snap point will be over here and if I select this one now that snap point is over here so now it's down to seven millimeters and of course you can change it to anything else that you might want but it's a, a cool option to add uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to setting up the distances between the dimensions and it makes it a bit easier to make your whole uh, drawing look a bit more uh, a, a bit better thought out and more organized Okay, moving on, sometimes you're going to have your numbers appear like this over certain elements. Uh, now, it, it might depend on what you're trying to achieve, but as you can see over here, it's kind of blocking off a significant portion of this connection between uh, the window and uh, the wall and kind of half of the window. So if you don't like that, you'll always have the option to select the, uh, the dimension itself, uh, go into edit type, and then here we have the option for the background. So the te text text background is currently set to opaque but if you change that to transparent and hit apply as you can see now uh, that will overlap now in this case it doesn't look good but if it was just over a piece of wall I think it would be pretty fairly easy to figure out what's going on here and what is this dimension reading without blocking off the wall but again that's something for you to figure out for yourself what works for you perfectly Okay, moving on, uh, one more thing that I wanted to show you, and that's how can you dimension or, or add the numbers for your stairs or your treads. So uh, let's go here to architecture, go to stair, and let's select one of the types, maybe the private, and then let's place a run here. 
hit finish and now let's say you want to add numbers for each of these threads now uh, a lot of countries have some sort of regulation that uh, regulates the thread numbering and that's something that you should show either in floor plans or sections and Revit actually has a tool for that uh, I guess not many people are familiar with it but when you go here to the annotate tab you have the uh, thread number option so if you click that you can just kind of, kind of come close to the stair and then Revit will allow you to pick either a, a line that's here on the edge on kind of quarter way middle three quarters of the way or the other edge and if you click any of these it will add numbers there so you can select this uh, kind of line of numbers you can play around with the number size you can make it smaller if you want like that or you can make it larger you can play around with uh, play around with the settings where the justification or the position of this uh, and the start number as well so you can start maybe from five if you want for some reason or you can start from can you start from zero yes you can there we go okay so you can play around with these numbers uh, and also this should work in a section so if I create a section like this there we go and if I then go to thread numbering, as you can see, if I click just like that, it's going to add numbers for each of these threads all alongside of this stair, which is kind of a, a, another really uh, cool option to have. Okay, so that concludes this quick video on uh, hacks and tricks and tips uh, about uh, annotation in Revit and dimensions in Revit. I hope you have learned something new and something cool and uh, thank you for watching. Now if you would like a more in-depth uh, tutorial or even a course uh, I suggest you check out my website balkanarctic.com there I have uh, both a beginner to intermediate course a 16 hour course where you can pretty much learn everything that you need to get started working on your own projects in Revit and I have tons of additional intermediate and advanced courses for uh, different uh, important topics in Revit so make sure to check that out Okay, so that's pretty much it for this uh, tutorial. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe, like and share this video and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a few days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.